Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We want to welcome you tonight to our Wednesday night service here at Oak Grove. Whether you're here with us in live in person or you're watching online, we thank you so, so much for joining us this evening. We can't uh, wait to hear what Brother Chris is going to tell us tonight about the end times. But before we start on that, we do want to ask the usher to come forward at this time. We're going to take up any prayer requests, any prayer requests tonight. Let's, of course, remember um, Hurricane Ian and all the lives and all the families affected by Hurricane Ian. It's uh, right now in Florida, and, of course, we're going to get some effects of that later on. Thank the Lord it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. But whatever comes, we pray that you and your family and your household and, and friends are safe and sound uh, during this time. Yes, Miss Joyce. What Ms. Joyce was saying was Ms. Helen Phillips is nearing the last stages of her life, so let's remember that family and that God would give them peace and comfort. And a praise report is that Mr. Frankie Driggers, everybody knows Mr. Frankie, comes to church here very faithfully. Um, he had a great report. He's going to be able to go out into a, n a another facility, um, kind of a, a next stage facility um, to recuperate, and he's doing a lot better. So we want to thank the Lord for that. Again, um, let's remember all those impacted or that will be impacted by Hurricane Ian. And let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight as we start this service. Dear Lord, we just come before you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings upon us, God. We just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather here, Lord, now, Lord, underneath your name. We just ask, Lord, now that you would just bless all those families, Lord, all those that households, those that are impacted by this hurricane, Lord God, all those that stand in its path, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you would just keep your hand upon them, Lord, now, Lord, that you would just protect them, that you would keep them safe and sound, God, that whatever happens in the aftermath, Lord, that you would give them, Lord, your peace, Lord, and your comfort that passes all understanding. Remember Miss Helen Phillips, Lord, just go with her and her family, Lord. Give them the strength that they're going to need in the days ahead. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that it looked like the hurricane could be a lot worse for us than we are play, praying now and proclaiming it's going to be. We thank you, Lord, for that and for changing its path. God, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you would just bless this service tonight, Lord. God, that you would move in a mighty way, Lord. Open our hearts to receive that you would you'd have us to receive, Lord. Bless the offering, Lord. Bless the gift and bless the giver. And we just ask this in your precious and your holy name. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements that we want to mention tonight. And I actually was given this paper by uh, Brother Chris to make sure that I did not forget anything. Um, we have our church business meeting is coming up. It has been rescheduled now for the second time. So now the new scheduled meeting is going to be on Sunday, October the 30th. Just ignore anything else you've heard up until this point. It's Sunday, October the 30th at 4 p.m. Sunday, October the 30th at 4 p.m. is going to be our church business meeting. Again, we will not be streaming that, so we want you to be a part of that if you are a regular tithe paying member, but please come out and join us that evening because we will not be streaming it. Um, we want to remember that uh, Mission Sunday is this coming Sunday, so please remember to bring your tithes and offering. Or remember, you can also give online for that. We start a new missions year coming uh, now this in October. Um, there is a box in the foyer for we are collecting, and I should remember this one. This is for the fall carnival. Um, my wife and I are over the fall carnival, and we encourage you to come out to our fall carnival, young or old. We've got something for you, and that includes those who are watching online. We've got something for you. We encourage you to come out and join us. We've got food. We've got game. We've got games. We've got prizes. We've got candy. We've got all kind of things. I'm excited about it. I know you'll have a good time if you'll come out. Uh, we are asking for donations of candy, and we've got boxes in our foyer if you would like to donate candy. And if you'd be willing to be a part of that and, and help out in any way, please see uh, my wife Rochelle or I about that. Otherwise, we are going to hunt you down. We do have your numbers in the church directory. We will call you or text you. We'll find you and, and, and ask for your help with this. So don't make us do that. Just come out and, and join us with this. Uh, Pastor's Appreciation Day is going to be Sunday, October the 9th. Uh, we want to definitely remember that. Uh, 1030 a.m. is a special service time. We will not have Sunday school. We have a special service time at 1030 on Sunday, October the 9th. Emmaus Road Quartet will be here that morning. So come out and join us. We know that you'll be blessed by them. 
they've been with now, us now a couple of times, and we know that you'll, that you'll enjoy and be blessed by them. And it says, please remember to make out all checks to Ryan or Rochelle Wiggins. <laughs> so just remember that. Please make out all checks or Venmo payments to Ryan or Rochelle Wiggins. Brother Chris is uh, clearing his throat behind me. <laughs> no, don't do that. We don't want to cause confusion. Yes, we want to bless Brother uh, Chris and Sister Crystal. So come out and join us for Pastor's Appreciation Day. And, and bless them, and let's celebrate them and all they do for Oak Grove. Um, last but not least, we want to uh, let you know that we are monitoring the church board and uh, the leadership team are monitoring the situation with Hurricane Ian. So, you know, right now it looks like everything's going to be gone by Sunday, and it's not going to be that bad. We'll just get some winds. But if anything changes, please just look for a notification on Facebook. We will be posting on Facebook should anything change, and we need to uh, postpone or cancel service or anything like that. So just kind of be aware that we are aware of the situation, and we'll let you know if anything changes about Sunday service. Uh, with all that out of the way now, I don't want to take up any more time. We want you to uh, nail, not, not sit back and enjoy, but we want you to take in uh, this next part of our series on the end times, on the rapture. Thank you so much. Hello again. I'm Pastor Chris Bambro of Oak Grove Pentecostal Holiness Church. And if this is the first of these videos that you're watching, I really encourage you to stop and to go back and to watch the first two videos of if you are watching this video. It will explain what's going on. We're going in order of everything that you're facing right now because of the fact that Jesus Christ came back for his church and the church is gone but you've unfortunately been left behind so I encourage you to go back and to watch those if you have not now if you have already watched those first two videos we're going to jump right in there's a lot of information I'm going to try to give you today and we're going to jump right in to can it get any worse the answer very quickly is yes it's going to be much much worse than what you've already faced. By this time, just going with the assumption that uh, everything we've already talked about has already taken place, by this time, there's already been an individual that has risen up and has made themselves the leader of the world. Not just this part of the world or that part of the world. This leader has come up and at first was talking peace. At first even signed a peace treaty with Israel and their surrounding countries that they've been warring for thousands of years, and yet he was able to broker peace. But then you also saw that a short time after that, maybe about a year, year and a half or so, war broke out everywhere. I'm glad that you're still able to watch this video, that you're still with us, because you know as well as I do that millions of people have already died since the disappearance, since the rapture of the church. And this man has come up, and because of the things that he did, and because of everything that was going on, there has been great famine that has taken place, that it just seems like all you are, you're just surrounded by death. Probably it's even a case where they're not even burying the bodies anymore because there's just no place to put them. It's been a very difficult time for you, and my heart grieves for you. But at the same time, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that it's going to get much, much worse. I know that may seem absolutely unfathomable at this point in time with everything that you've already seen, with everything you've already been through, but trust me, it's going to be far worse. It's been probably a year and a half to two years since the disappearance happened. And the things that I'm getting ready to go over with you, we're going to talk about the last two seals, or the last uh, uh, three seals, rather, 
We talked about the first four last, uh, in the last video. And then I'm also going to talk to you about the trumpet judgments. And that's where it really gets cranked up. And even then, it's not going to be the worst that you're going to see. But let me come into this and, and just talk to you now. And, and let's get through this. I do want to make mention to you before we go any further that there is a lot that I'm leaving out. Because a lot of it is mentioned in the Bible, which I hope that you've already been able to acquire one and hold on to it for dear life, literally for dear life. Because they are not, if, if they're already banned, or maybe they're already banned, but if they aren't already, they will be. But hold on to that Bible for dear life because that is going to be your instruction guide through this time. But there's so much that I could tell you but the purpose of this video is just to try to get you to the end. And hopefully, the second coming of Jesus Christ, the glorious appearing, when it takes place, hopefully, you'll still be around, and hopefully, you have given your heart to Jesus Christ. And though you miss the rapture, you'll be able to welcome Him when He comes back. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just wanted to let you know there will be a lot more that's, that I could tell you. There are probably already two gentlemen in Israel that have already appeared, that have been preaching and, and have actually been showing some signs and some wonders of things. People are trying to kill them. People are trying to get rid of them. And every time somebody tries to approach them, these men are breathing fire out of their mouths and consuming those that are trying to attack them. I know that sounds... That would have sounded far-fetched probably about two or three years ago, wouldn't it have? But you've seen it yourself. You've heard about it yourself. Nobody can touch these men. We don't have time to get into that right now. I've got to make sure you make it to the end, that you have all the information you need so that you can make it to the end. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with the fifth seal. That's where we left off last week. And it's found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 and 11. And all the events from this point until the midpoint of the tribulation, actually from about the time that the war started until the, uh, the midpoint of the tribulation, is only going to be a period of about two years. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how a lot of that is even going to be in a much shorter amount of time. It's just going to be one hard hit after another. Let's take a look at Revelation 6, 9 through 11. We're going to talk about the fifth seal. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until the fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. In Bible times, the white raiment, you know, we look at it as being purity, but it also was a sign of victory. It was a victor's garment. And so these martyrs that they gave their life for Christ, and, and we're not sure how far back these martyrs go. Do they go all the way back to Stephen, who was the first martyr of Jesus Christ up until the time of the rapture, and maybe even up until the time of the fifth seal being broken? We really aren't sure. What we do know is this, that millions upon millions of people have given their lives for the cause of Christ. That there have been people that have been killed, they've been tortured, they have been absolutely destroyed because of the fact that they chose to follow Jesus Christ, the one that I right now am residing with, that we, are, we have been brought into heaven to be with him, and that's why you're only able to hear me through this video. But millions upon millions of people have given their lives for Jesus Christ, and at this time, when this seal is opened, what many scholars believe that even though this is something that's happening in heaven, the martyrs are at the altar and they're, they're uh, asking God, when, when are we going to be avenged? When is our blood going to be avenged? And they're given those white robes of, of purity, of sanctification, but also of victory. 
even though all that's happening in heaven, many scholars believe that the fact that this seal is being broken where it is means that the martyrdom of believers on earth with you right now, those that gave their hearts to Christ after the rapture, that that martyrdom is going to be ramped up. You see, when the Antichrist, and you know, you know him by name, but when the Antichrist comes in, he comes in with peace. He comes in talking about, let's all get along. Let's all join together in unity. Let's be a brotherhood. Let's be humankind together and, and, and show human kindness. But that changes once the war happens. And then he becomes a dictator, a totalitarian. He becomes an absolute despot of the worst caliber. And he simply, if there's someone he disagrees with, they're gone. He gets rid of them. So many scholars believe that when this seal is broken, that will be the, the time that the ramping up of the martyrs will begin to take place. And you'll begin to see that. You'll begin to see advertisements. You'll begin to see patrols that will stop people in the street and take them and possibly execute them even right there in the street. You'll see and hear about all these horrible rebels that are trying to come against, uh, these haters that are trying to come against uh, your supreme leader, and they've got to be stopped, and the only way to stop them is to eliminate them. If you've given your heart to Jesus Christ, you're going to be on their list. I pray you stay safe. I pray you stay hidden. But trust me, know that from now until either your death or the glorious reappearing, the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, someone is coming after you. Let's move on to the sixth seal. The sixth seal is found in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And as I said, I'm going to go through this a lot because I'm actually going to go through all seven of the trumpet judgments here in just a, a few moments. But the sixth seal, Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now I do want to make mention that when they say the great day of his wrath has come, that's not a 24-hour day. It is referring to a season, a period of time. But they're saying that the great time of his wrath has come. This is going to be a time of great and unimaginable terror throughout the entire world. It's not going to be uh, isolated to just one area. Throughout the entire world, with the exception of probably Jerusalem, the entire world is going to see this take place. The entire world is going to be terrified because every mountain and every hill is going to be moving and shifting. And many, many deaths are going to come. And they're going to pray that the rocks would just fall on them. People are going to be begging to die. They're going to be committing suicide. They're going to be jumping off of buildings, jumping, uh, jumping uh, into lakes and rivers. They're going to be doing all sorts of things just to die so they can just get it over with. Have you ever gone through such pain or such terror or such of a difficult time, have you ever gone through such a difficult time that you were just saying, Lord, just take me now. Let me just die. You're going to see that throughout the entire world. What's interesting here is where it says that as the heaven, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. It just kind of is going to fold up 
the skies, the clouds, everything, it was just going to kind of almost roll up, and then all these horrible things are going to take place. You won't be able to mistake it. You, you won't be confused and say, well, is this what they were talking about? I think I felt an earthquake. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be earthquakes like you have never experienced before. Quickly moving on to the seventh seal. This is an interesting one. It's Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. It skips over and continues on in chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. That doesn't sound like that's that big of a deal, right? Except for the fact that the reason why there is silence in that time, and there, there are a lot of different theories, or some that say that it was just a time of, of quiet worship. There are some that say that it was a time where they were mourning those that had already died. But here's the thing. The seventh seal announces the trumpet judgments. There are three sets of judgments. There's the, the seals, the trumpet judgments, and the bowl judgments. And each one is exponentially worse than the one before. So the seventh seal is broken and there's a period of silence for the space of about half an hour. Think about sitting someplace where it's just silence for 30 straight minutes. Most of us go crazy with that. We start humming, we start making noise, we start scratching something. I mean, we just, it would drive us crazy. But for the space of about half an hour, silence in heaven. The reason is because of the great dread and horror of what's about to take place. Now, I know you might be saying, look, Pastor Chris, I've seen some things I never thought I would ever see before. I thought it was bad enough just the chaos that we had when, when the disappearance happened, when the rapture happened. And then, you know, then we had this war, and it was just so, uh, so just horrifying, and so many people died. And then, of course, we had the famine come in, and, and people couldn't afford food. And, and, and then the wild animals that were coming from the forest, and, and just, you know, being a, people just getting attacked by dogs and getting attacked by what would seem like tame animals, but instead they were losing their lives to these things. I don't think you can scare me anymore. I don't think that you can, you can make me any more afraid than I've already been. I've, I've gotten numb to it. Just wait. It's not called the Great Tribulation for nothing. Let's take a look at the trumpet judgments. Now, the first six judgment or trumpets are found in Revelation eight and uh, Revelation chapter eight and chapter nine, with the final trumpet being found in Revelation. 11. We're not going to deal with what's in between there because that's more things that are happening in heaven. And, and like I said, I'm trying to get just the, the nuts and bolts for you so that you can hopefully make it to the end. I'm not going to read the, uh, the scriptures very much as far as uh, reading to you just for time's sake, but I am going to let you know where these are and, and what everything is. But the very first trumpet that sounded, the first trumpet is in Revelation 8, verse 7. This trumpet, when this trumpet sounds, hail, not little pea-sized hail that you got to call the window company to come and put the little stuff in there and fix the, the little chip out of your window. We're talking hail that will kill people. We're talking hail the size of soccer balls. We're talking about hail that is is giant, but it's not just hail, but it's also fire and it's mingled with blood. All of this is going to start falling from the sky. Imagine you're out trying to go find some food. You're out just trying to get from one place to another. And suddenly in front of you, a fireball that is ice and fire and blood smashes in front of you, like I said, maybe the size of a volleyball or a soccer ball. And you're in shock because you're thinking, if I had just taken a few more steps before that fell, I'd be toast. Many people are going to be killed by that. 
Many people are going to be destroyed by that. But it's not even just the people, though. The scripture goes on to say that because of the fire, that one-third of all trees, all trees, all over the entire world, one-third of all trees are going to be destroyed. All the green grass on the earth is going to be destroyed because of the fires. I remember a few years before I made this video that the, the nation of Australia lost billions and billions and billions of dollars in, in property damage because of wildfire that was going through. It was, it was so intense to watch it even on television, even being half a world away. It was so intense to watch what was happening. That was just a taste. Because all the green grass is going to be burnt up, and a third of all trees. Now think about this. You've already been through famine. What do you think is going to happen to any livestock that are left if they have no grass to feed on? More famine is coming. Any food that you're able to store, anything that you're able to put aside, I recommend you do, because the more, 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 more things come, the less it's going to be available to you. So a third of all trees are destroyed and all the green grass is destroyed. The second trumpet then gets blown. Now, we don't know how long between each one. We don't know if the hailstorm is going to just it's going to just take place and maybe be about 30 minutes and then stop. And then you'll ha have a reprieve before the next judgment. We don't know. I don't believe that they'll overlap. I believe the results from them will overlap, but I don't believe that they're going to necessarily overlap where one trumpet will still be sounding while another trumpet begins to sound. But the second trumpet talks about a fiery mountain being cast into the sea. And when this mountain, you know, an asteroid, whatever it may be, um, you, you'll know what it is when it happens. But this mountain, this asteroid, is going to hit the oceans. They've had plenty of movies about uh, asteroids hitting the Earth, and always at the last moment, everybody gets okay, or, or there have been a couple where they, it did damage, but not as bad as you thought, and the human spirit and the human race still survived and went on. When this fiery mountain is cast into the sea, what's going to happen is a third of all oceans of all salt water, the seas, the oceans, and everything, one-third of them will turn to blood. Now, part of that is going to be because of the number of people that are going to be killed and the number of sea animals that are going to be killed. Because as we continue to read in that scripture, one-third of, of the sea life will die. One-third of all ships in all the world's waterways will be destroyed. This is military ships, shipping, fishing, any other kind of, of ships that are in the ocean. When they are in the ocean at the time that this fiery mountain hits, one-third of all ships in the world are going to be destroyed. That's how big of an event this is going to be. Obviously, that's going to add to the famine because if a third of all sea, sea life is killed, then we know that that's going to cut down on food supply. If we know that a third of the ships are now gone, how are they going to be able to export food from one country to another? It's going to be a horrible, horrible time, and you're just getting started. The third trumpet sounds... And this one is interesting because this one, in fact, I'm going to read it to you. It's not going to be on the screen, but I'm going to read it to you about the third trumpet. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 10, it says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. If you look up the word wormwood in the Greek, it is referring to a plant that when it, when it comes in contact with water, it's incredibly bitter and it's poisonous. 
So here's the thing. The star or the fiery mountain fell first. It hit all the salt water. But now this asteroid of wormwood hits the fresh waters. The water that you drink. The water that you're depending on. It hits this waters and a third of all the fresh water supply of the world turns bitter and poisoned. And the word says that many people will die because of the water. They're either going to die because of the water being poisoned, because they're going to drink of that water. They're going to be so thirsty. They're going to be uh, so wanting to have water that they're going to just try and see if they can survive it, and they won't. Or they're going to die because of dehydration, because they can't find a fresh water supply. What a horrible way. What a horrible way to die, because that's not immediate. That's going to take some time. The fourth trumpet is sounded. The fourth trumpet, the sun, the moon, and all the stars are going to be darkened by one-third However bright they are for you right now, they're going to be darkened by one-third. That doesn't sound like much. You still have two-thirds there, but think about a third of the sun's light, a third of the sun's heat, a third of, uh, if people have solar uh, panels uh, for their homes or, or you know, they're, they're trying to operate generators with it or, or whatever it is, a third of all the power of the sun of the moon and of the stars is going to be darkened. Not only that, but also your daylight in the day is going to be reduced by a third. So if you're in the middle of summer or you know right at the uh, uh, the summer solstice and you know you're supposed to have about twelve hours of sun a day or whatever it may be, if you're at that place, it's going to be cut in into thirds, and a third of that is going to be gone. You're not going to have as much time with trying to grow plants, trying to grow vegetables. They're not going to get as much sun as they need. You're not going to have as much time to be able to go out and forage and do the things that you need to do. That may work to your benefit because there are patrols out there that are trying to find uh, people, that are trying to find Christians it's going to make it more difficult for them to find him and easier for the Christians to hide. But a, a third of all that, of all sun, of as bright as it is at noon, reduce that by a third, and that's the best it's going to get. What also happens, though, is this. Because it says, and I'll read this part as well, it says, in verse 13 of chapter 8, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. I fully believe, I fully believe that the people on earth are going to hear that voice it's not something i don't believe that it's something that the angel is announcing to the people of heaven they're already aware of what's happening that's why there was the silence in heaven for half an hour i believe that when that trumpet is sounded when that fourth trumpet is sounded that the entire earth is going to hear in the language that they speak because God can do anything. They're going to hear woe. Woe. Not woe like as in a horse, but W-O-E. As in, my heart is broken. Such grief and pain that's coming to you. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. How bad does it have to be of what's coming up that an angel is flying through the sky and that voice is booming with no amplification needed? 
that voice is booming and saying, y'all are in trouble. Y'all are about to get it now. That's basically what he's saying. You're about to see, I mean, what you've seen is horrible. What you've seen is terrible. What you've seen is something that is absolutely goes beyond imagination. Wait till the next one. Now, I will tell you this. At the beginning of this video, I said that maybe you're sitting there saying, well, Pastor Chris, you can't scare me anymore from what I've already seen. And maybe I have. This fifth trumpet is going to scare you even more. When this fifth trumpet sounds, the Bible says there's going to be a star that's going to fall from heaven and he shall have the key to a bottomless pit. Now, with the fact that they said he shall have a key, stars obviously are not he or she. So we, we believe that when they say star, it's going to be an angel, it's going to be a messenger, it's going to be somebody that's going to come with that key and they've got a job to do and they're going to open up a bottomless pit and when they open up that pit, you might say, well, where is the pit? I have no idea. I don't know how it's going to work. But when they open that pit, smoke and fire and brimstone is going to rise up from the pit. And let me tell you that fire and brimstone and smoke are all signs of God's judgment. But what's going to come out of that pit next is going to blow away anything that Hollywood has ever tried. Anything Hollywood has ever... There have been times that Hollywood has tried to even describe these particular creatures, but when you see them, it's going to be a whole different story. I'm going to describe to you here in just a moment what they are, but they are demonic locusts. And I know that sounds weird. It's like, you know, devil frogs or something. They're demonic locusts. They're demonic spirits that are going to come up out of this pit. And I'm going to show a picture on the screen here in just a moment. This is just an artist rendition, but it gives you an idea, trying to get your mind wrapped around it. I've seen some other pictures, and, and they've been very plain and boring and pencil drawings. But I want to give you something, just an idea. I'm not saying that, that this picture is exactly what they're going to look like, but what I am saying is the terror, the fear... I think is captured pretty well in this because this is how the Bible describes these creatures that are going to come out. They resemble horses going into battle with golden crowns on their heads. They have the face of men, the hair of women, the teeth of lions. They have breastplates as of iron. They have wings that make the sound of many horses and chariots going to battle they have the tails of scorpions with stings in their tails and here's the thing these creatures are going to go out of this bottomless pit i don't know if they're going to be the size of locusts or if they're going to be the size of horses but these creatures are going to go out over all the world and find those that have not been sealed by god and when I say sealed, if you look a little bit earlier in one of the chapters we didn't look at uh, tonight, you'll see where there's a place where there's 144,000 that are going to be sealed, but they're going to be witnesses that are going to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ here in heaven, or, or here on earth rather. But it also is sealing those who have given their life to Jesus Christ. We will be sealed. I'm already going to have my seal. I'm already going to be heaven and, uh, in heaven and I'm already going to be sealed. But if you have given your life to Christ, you're going to be sealed, which means you're going to be protected from these creatures because these creatures are going to seek out those who have not received Jesus Christ. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, it's going to be a very good thing for you to do before this trumpet sounds. Because these creatures, these scorpions, these locusts, these demons, 
are going to go and they're going to sting people that are not saved, people that are not sealed. And the pain is going to be constant with absolutely no relief whatsoever for five months. Five months. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Or, you know, we're in South Carolina going to the beach and getting stung by a jellyfish or, or a hornet or, or even a snake bite. And the agony and the, the searing pain that you have, but, you know, you take some medicine and things get better. Eventually it wears off, maybe not soon enough for you, but eventually it wears off. Now imagine that pain being ramped up to 100 for five straight months. Now you might say, well, I'll just kill myself. It's not worth it to me. Here's the problem. According to Scripture, death is going to escape them. Literally what's going to happen is this. When anybody is stung by this demonic spirit, and it says in the, in the word that they have a king, and they call him, in the Hebrew tongue, they call him Apollyon, and in the Greek tongue, it's a bad, uh, unless I mix those two up, I do that sometimes, but uh, in the Hebrew tongue, it's a bad, excuse me, and then in the Greek tongue, it's Apollyon, and it means the destroyer, and they've got this king, but here's the thing, if they sting anybody, death will escape them for five months. For five months, they're going to be immortal. The problem is they are not going to want to live. They're going to jump out of buildings and their bones will be broken, but they'll survive. They're going to take guns and put them to their heads and pull the trigger and the bullet will go through and will cause great pain and damage, but they'll survive. They'll take a knife or a bayonet or something stab themselves directly in the heart they'll feel all the pain they'll do all the damage but they'll still survive for five months I will tell you this if you have received Christ during that time that's the time for you to stock up on as much food as you can. That's a time for you to go and get whatever resources you possibly can because those who have, are not following Christ are going to be dealing with that pain, that searing pain, and you're going to have five months for you to be able to go and get what you need so you can be prepared for the very bad stuff that's coming up later. Now, I know this may sound uh, far-fetched and science fiction, Sounds like a good movie, Pastor Chris, but I don't know if I, I believe it. Well, you didn't believe that a billion people could simply disappear either. You didn't believe that a great earthquake could happen and graves be opened up and yet there be no bodies. You didn't believe that anything could happen to where every baby on the face of the earth was gone. Every child that had not learned yet right from wrong simply disappeared. But now I think you believe. So that trumpet sounds. And let me say one more thing about them. In my time, there are many people because they want to try to take what the Bible is saying. And like I said, there's a lot of symbolism in Revelation. In fact, next Next video, we're going to get into some things that are symbol, uh, symbols instead of being literal, and I'm going to explain those to you. But there's a lot of symbolism in the, in the book of Revelation, but there's some things that are just the way that it says. And this is one of those things, I believe it's the way it's said. But in this time, there are people that say that, well, these scorpions, they sound a lot like helicopters, like gunships, military gunships. Because, well, you know, they have the face of the man. Well, the, the, the windows, the, the windshield of the helicopter, you can see the face of the man. And, you know, their wings sound like many horses and chariots going to battle. And, you know, have you ever been around a, a gunship and you hear that, that, uh, those blades going by it can it can resemble that and the the tail of a scorpion you know the long tail going behind the helicopter the problem is there's too many other things the hair of the woman the sting in the tail 
the fact that it's going to sting people and they're not going to die, but they're going to wish they would for five months. All that, in my opinion, disqualifies a helicopter. But you'll see. One way or the other, you will see. Going quickly to the sixth trumpet. The time of the sixth trumpet, four angels are loosed. I know I haven't put a lot of scripture on the screen for you, but I do want to read a little bit of this to you. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, it says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which hath had the trumpet, Loose the four angels who are bound in the great Euphrates. What this tells us, because the good angels, the ones that are on God's side, the ones that have been faithful to God, they're not bound. So this tells us these are probably four fallen angels that were bound by God and put in the river Euphrates. The river Euphrates has a very important significance in this because the river Euphrates was the entryway for invasion for so many times that God allowed different nations to come and to take over Israel because they were living away from God. They came in through the Euphrates. So it's a symbol of God's judgment coming to pass. And the four angels were loosed and were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now, a lot of people have already died. But if you remember in the first video, I said that there's going to be one quarter of the people that survived or that were alive at the time of the rapture. Only one quarter of the people are still going to be alive at the end of the tribulation. And the four angels were loosed. And the number of the army of horsemen were 200,000. Thousand. Now, most of the time in the Bible, they'll say, and the, the multitudes could not be counted, and it was the sands of the sea. And you know, when it's a, a really large number, they'll, they'll say something to say, look, I have no idea how many it was, but it was a whole lot. But John says here, excuse me, in verse 16, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. God wanted to make sure that we knew just how large this army is, 200 million horsemen, demons. And what are they doing? What is their purpose? What's the reason for them coming? Their sole purpose is to kill a third of the people of the earth. Now, I do have some good news if you've received Christ. It's another situation where they are not going to touch those who have been sealed. Those who have been sealed by the blood of the Lamb. In the book of Exodus, when we hear about the story of uh, Moses, and we hear about the account of the Israelites with the ten plagues, and the very last plague is the death angel, and they have to put the blood of the Lamb over their doorposts. That's where the Jewish holiday Passover uh, comes from. They had to put the blood of the Lamb over the doorpost, and the death angel just went by. It's going to be the same thing, except that that seal is not going to be something on a doorpost. It's going to be something that they can see within our hearts. It's going to be something in our spirit, and it's going to make them leave us alone. But they're going to go and kill for a year, and a month, and a day, and an hour. Now, I will tell you this. With the fact that they have that amount of time, a year, a month, a day, and an hour, that's a, a year and, and a month, 13 months, but then we also include in that the five months for the scorpions of, of the people having to be tortured because the thing, the thing is we know that these angels that are, are these demons that are released from the Euphrates River they can't go and kill somebody who's been stung by one of the locusts and are still in that five month period because death is going to elude them so what we know is this we know from the time that the last person is stung 
And I don't know, once again, if it's going to be over a day, if it's going to be a week, if it's going to be an hour. I have no idea how long these demonic spirits are going to be loose to do their damage. But when the last person is stung and their five months is over, then the next trumpet can sound. And, and these, this 200 million horsemen army is going to begin to destroy. That's a year and a half. Then we also estimate that just the first seal being broken, the peace that the Antichrist uh, uh, brokers, that it's going to be probably about a year to a year and a half. Do you realize what that means? It means everything that I have been telling you about the war and death and famine and the different uh, trumpet or, or the rest of the seals being broken and then all these trumpets being sounded up until the final trumpet is sounded is going to happen in, to, in a period of approximately six months. You want to talk about a time of trouble. Can you imagine all that happening? The mountain falling into the sky, wormwood hitting the waters, the, the demon locusts, the, the, uh, uh, the animals coming out of the forest and killing people. All these things happening in a period of approximately six months. We see, and I'm coming to a close, but we see the seventh trumpet sounded. This isn't sounded until Revelation 11. There's some things that happen between 8 and 11 that, or 9 and 11 rather, that I'm not going to be able to get into right now. But it talks about the temple of God being opened. And what many believe, and I believe this myself, you know, so many people here on earth talk about the imaginary guy in the sky. Well, at least now they do. They talk about that, um, I don't believe in some man upstairs. I don't believe in some man in the sky. What's happening here is God is going to remove that veil and is going to allow the temple to be seen and the Ark of the Covenant to be seen. It talks about it, as I said, in Revelation chapter 11. It talks about the uh, the temple or the ark of uh excuse me um i was in the wrong place i'm sorry it talks about the ark of the testament being seen and the thing is when it opens up like this and when all these things happen people are going to see this and instead of them saying oh we were wrong oh oh how could we have gotten this so wrong look there he is he's right there look at the heavens the Bible says that they're not going to repent of their thieves, thievery. They're not going to repent of their fornication. They're not going to repent of their murders. They're not going to repent of the things that they have done. But instead, all they're going to do is become angry at God because he's up there and they're down here. But they had a chance. They had a chance to receive him. They had a chance to where they wouldn't have had to go through any of this. You had a chance to where you wouldn't have had to see any of this. But now you have a chance to be up there with him. Many scholars, as I said, believe that the, the God will literally open the heavens and this will there's two reasons for this, two reasons why we believe this is going to happen. As I said, I'm closing with this. Number one, if you've received Christ, and all these things are happening, and suddenly the heavens open up and you see the host of heaven, you see the temple of God, you see the Ark of the Covenant, you see these things, and now you're a Christian, how much hope is that going to give you to make it through to the end? How much hope are you going to have? Because you're going to say, the Bible said this was going to happen. And he's giving me hope to know that whether I, I die tomorrow as a martyr or if I make it all the way to the end, that one day I'm going to be with him. But it's also going to instill fear and dread and absolute hatred in the hearts and lives of those who have not received him. They're going to look at him as the enemy. 
But if, as long as they have not received the mark of the beast, as the word says, and we're going to deal with that next week, as long as they've not received that mark, there's still hope. Going through all these judgments, going through all this trial, there's still hope. But that hope is only found in Jesus Christ. In our next video, we're going to talk about what's happened to him. This is referring to the person I keep referring to as the Antichrist. But there's another man that's with him that's really kind of a promoter. Maybe he's come on the scene. Maybe he, you already know who he is. Kind of like his right-hand man. It's like you don't see one without seeing the other. You know, he's always going to be talking about, you know, he's going to be the spokesman that's going to be talking in, the, uh, um, uh, in the, the newscasts and talking in the interviews, saying, well, you know, da 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 whatever his name may be. You know, he has brought peace, and he, you know, he's going to be that spin doctor, I guess, is the word that we would use in politics today. But something's going to happen to him at the halfway point of the tribulation, and you're going to see a major change. Because somebody's going to move in that's even worse than what he could ever think about being. I pray you make it to the next video. I pray you make it to the next time I can talk to you. And if you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, I urge you, I urge you, before it's too late, some of these judgments that are coming, you can avoid if you'll only give your life to Him. May God bless you, and may God help you.